Well, hello, folks. So glad to be with you today as we move through the book of Ephesians. And today we're going to be looking at Ephesians 3 and verses 14 and following to the end of the, end of the uh, chapter. And this is one of the, uh, I don't know how to say it, I guess next to the Lord's Prayer, this is one of the greatest prayers in all of the Word of God. There are many great prayers in the Word of God, and uh, you can read them and, and benefit from them, but I want to tell you this prayer that Paul has here is the prayer really that goes beyond, goes beyond what we can think or imagine. I don't know about you, but when I pray sometimes, I wonder how effective it is. Well, this prayer can help us to answer that question. So let's pray. You get your Bibles, and we'll be right back together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can come before your word today. And Lord, what I pray for today in my life and the lives of those who watch this is that we might be uh, understanding. We might, we might get what we need from this to live for this day and for this week. Father, would you just speak to us and teach us by the Holy Spirit and the truth of your word. Thank you, Jesus, that you allow us to come before your word and understand it by the aid of the Holy Spirit. I thank you that it's a living word. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as I say, Paul's prayer is just outstanding. So let me read it. So he's praying for the Ephesians, and he's been talking about the uh, stewardship that he has, and we have, and the ministry we have, and the pressures we feel. And he's been talking about how we have, have, we have boldness before the Father. We have access and assurance before the Father. <clears throat> and then he says, for this reason because of all these things I just said. For this reason, he said, I bow my knees before the Father. How can he do that? Because he had boldness. He had access. He has assurance that God's going to hear him. He says, from whom every family of heaven and on earth derives his name, that, now watch what he says here, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened, he says, in the inner man, to be strengthened with inner power, with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. That's a remarkable statement. Then he says in a doxology, he says, Now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond what we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church, and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Wow. What, what a text of scripture here. And, and to think about praying for people in this way and praying that God would grant people this. If you ever want to pray for me, pray this prayer. Pray the very words right here. Pray this prayer in my life. There are three petitions here that build upon one another. There's one petition. If we could read this like Paul wrote it, it would just be so obvious that one thing builds upon another. And there's a little catch word in here. We don't see it in English, but there's a little catch word that Paul uses three times to say, this leads to this, leads to this. And then he ends with this uh, prayer that says he's able to do far beyond what we ask or think. And that's why I call this the prayer that goes beyond. First of all, he talks about praying for people to have inner strength, inner strength, strength, strengthened with power through the Holy Spirit in the inner man. Look in verse 16. I ask that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through the Spirit in the inner man. Well, I don't know about you, but I need energizing strength from God in my life. I can't do this on my own. In, in my flesh, I can't be sweeter I can't be kinder. I can't be more gracious. I can't be loving. It's just not a part of my nature. You know, my nature needs to be energized by the presence and the power of God. And what he does, he departs, he, 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 he imparts, I should say, divine power into our lives on the strength of this prayer, and he strengthens us in our weaknesses. Th think about this. What, what are your spiritual weaknesses? Well, the reason that they're weaknesses is because you and I don't have any ability to overcome them. There's no way I can overcome my spiritual weakness. There's no way I can overcome the distortions of my mind and my memory. 
uh, the distortions of my heart as I look at the world around me and make judgments about it and become judgmental. I can't overcome that. That's my weaknesses. It takes the power of God that's available to us in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ for us to overcome that. And Paul is praying that he would strengthen us in our weaknesses. But you know what? Christ comes to us in degrees, doesn't he? I've heard it says that there are many people who are truly Christians, but they're not fully Christians. You know, they're, they're truly Christ followers at some level, but they're not totally Christ followers at the deepest level. And we all live on sort of that, that, that scale, don't we? And, and we? and we live on that periodically. It goes like this. Sometimes we're just barely surviving in Christ's likenesses, in our, in our pursuit of the Lord, in our fellowship with Him. And then sometimes we have such an overwhelming desire. We just live for Christ, love Christ, worship Christ. It's not any problem whatsoever. But there are degrees in that. It's like somebody inviting the Lord to the house. Some people invite him in as a guest, and they don't mind him being there. In fact, they enjoy him being there. Uh, some people enjoy maybe the Lord staying in a room of the house. That's a little bit deeper, being kind of a part of the family and being a little more than just a guest. And then some people turn the whole house over to him. That, that's the degrees I'm talking about here. And so Christ comes to us in degrees by giving us strength in the inner man. We don't get it all the first day that we're believers. Well, we, don't, we don't get everything about godliness the first day we were believers. We, we grow and grow and grow in that. As we're sanctified by the Holy Spirit, the part of being in the presence of Christ and having the Spirit of God in our lives is that we get strength by degrees. We get strength by degrees. But the more you want, the more you can have. I love it what Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed is the one who hungers and thirsts for righteousness, for he'll be filled. And then he's talking about this right here in, the, in, in verse 19. He says this, he says, And to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled unto all the fullness of God. You're as spiritual, and I'm as spiritual as we want to be. As much of the fullness of God as we can stand, we can have. Now, God knows best. If he gave us everything about godliness that, that uh, we need forever, I guess it would be overwhelming. And many saints have had this experience. I remember Dwight L. Moody's experience in New York City, walking the streets, and God's Spirit began to fall upon him. And he goes back to his hotel room, and finally he says, Lord, I can't take it anymore. It's overwhelming. But here's what we can say. Lord, give me strength according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Through Christ, give me strength and give me all I can take today, all I can fathom, all I can understand, all I can live through today. Now, tomorrow, there's, there's something else going on. I don't need anything in the past, but today, I'd love, like to have all the inner strength, all the power through the Holy Spirit, all, all that I can take. And we can say that to the Holy Spirit. Spirit, fill my life, control my life. Give me the fullness of Christ as much as possible today. Put all you can in all of me, all that I can stand. What a great prayer that is. Have you prayed that for yourself? Lord, give me what I can stand today. Lord, give me the fullness of what I can stand even today. And then he says, and then I want you to be able to be strengthened so that Christ can dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love will be able to comprehend something. Comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and knowledge of the love of Christ. So let's look at this. To comprehend and to know the love of Christ. Do you imagine that you know all about the love of Christ? Listen, the love of God is limitless. There are no boundaries to the love of God. He is God and He is love. He is God and He is grace. He's God and He is mercy. And we can't possibly in this life plumb to the very depths of the love of God. It takes the power of God to give us strength by the Holy Spirit in the inner man for us to even comprehend what the love of God is. The old hymn, the love of God is greater far than men in tongue could ever say. The, uh, the writer of that hymn goes on to say, you know, if the oceans were ink, right, and my words were quills, I, I, I couldn't dry up this ocean by writing about the love of God. 
how marvelous, how wonderful. It's beyond understanding, but we can experience what we can experience today. I don't often think about comprehending the love of God in my daily life. I assume too often that I know what that is, and I, I know what that is on the basis of my salvation, and on the basis that I can pray and whatever else, but just to know and comprehend the love of God in all of its dimensions. Look, this, look at what he says. He says in all of its dimensions, to be able to comprehend uh, all the saints, the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, to know the love of God in all of its dimensions. The love of God for my family, the love of God for worship, the love of God for witnessing, the love of God for praying. If I begin to think about the love of God in my life that he's given to us in Jesus Christ and confirmed it by the Holy Spirit, and if I begin to be strengthened, then I can be empowered to comprehend it. I can't comprehend it on my own. Just like I can't save myself, just like you didn't save yourself, God did it. We need the power of God in the inner man to comprehend it because it has to overcome all the thoughts we have that are wrong. We, all, we have so many wrong thoughts about the Lord and about you know, his grace and his mercy and the world and the end of times and whatever else and the Bible. How many times do you go to the Bible and scratch your head and say, I have no idea what that means. I can't comprehend it. I don't really understand it. And we have to have the, the, the Holy Spirit in order to comprehend it. To comprehend something is to apprehend something, is to make it your own, is to, is to own it and live it and believe it, and, and to know by experience, listen to what he says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, you being rooted and grounded, may be able to comprehend with all the saints, with all this stuff. And then he says, and, and which surpasses knowledge. So comprehension is is assimilating it in. Comprehension is, is, uh, is gaining it, if you will. Comprehension is apprehending it. And then knowing it is knowing it by experience. So I just don't, I just don't apprehend it here. It flows through my life in every part of my life. Whether I'm, a, whether I'm preaching uh, the Word of God or, or whether I'm uh, 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 raising my children or doing work uh, down at the factory or in the law office or whatever else, teaching children in public school, it doesn't matter. So when I know it, I know it by experience. So I, I apprehend it and it flows out of my life and I begin to live out the love of God. It's not just living out rules and regulations and what I shouldn't do and should do. It's this love of God overwhelming me and causes my life to be a testimony of the love of God, but it's filled with apprehending that love and experiencing that love and then living that love and serving God out of that love. I think there are three conditions for that. To apprehend the love of God and to be able to know the love of God, we have to be rooted and grounded in God's power. Rooted and grounded. Rooted is like a tree that's rooted. We sing that song, just like a tree uh, st uh, uh, standing by the water. I shall not be moved. I'm growing. My roots are deep in the love of God. I, I, I'm, I'm growing under that. I can't be moved by the winds of fortune and change. I can't be overcome by pressure and difficulty. It's not going to happen. And grounded is, is the foundation for a building. So you're rooted in God's love through Christ. You're grounded in that love and uh, with God's power, and nothing can disturb you, if you will, take you off of task. And then he says, uh, you, you be endowed with power. That is to live uh, fully empowered. That is to live fully empowered with the grace of God. And you're able to apply everything in your life. When you're rooted and grounded, when everything else is falling around, when everybody else's lives are totally uh, at a loss and, and upside down, you're steady. You're strong and steady in the power of God and in the love of God. And he says to pursue this knowledge, that's, that's fellowship with others, isn't it? He says you, that you pr pr pursue this knowledge to be filled up uh, with everything of God. Back, uh, back a few verses uh, before that, he talks about how we've been uh, folded into the body of Christ. And so we pursue knowledge and fellowship with other people. Worship and communion gives us more spiritual power to be rooted and grounded. I'm going to go off on a little aside here, but if you're not actively in a church and you're not actively worshiping with the people of God in a local church, then you're not as strong as you'll ever need to be. 
I'll just say that because that's what the Bible says. The Bible says we're a part of God's household and we've been built upon this foundation of the apostles and Christ and uh, apostles and prophets and Christ is the cornerstone and we're being fitted together. We're, we're here together. There's something about serving the Lord in the context of other people. If you believe you can live your life individually apart from the word of God and apart from the people of God, you're absolutely wrong. That's a lie. And you need to correct that lie and go before the Lord and repent and get in a fellowship. You say, well, I've been hurt. Well, I have too. That doesn't take away the fact that in the body of Christ, where Christ is the head, that's where we get much of our strength. It's not a personal salvation, folks. It's the body of Christ we're saved into. And so we need to know that and be a part of that. Christian life and doing life together and worshiping the Lord and the ups and downs of relationships and troubles and whatever else, they come to churches just like that. And then the final petition is that we could see receive the totality of God's blessing, all that God is willing to give. Listen to this in verse 19. And to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Let me repeat myself. I don't think we understand this verse always. I'm going to confess my own ignorance, and I'm going to confess something else that's not very pleasant. I'm going to f confess the fact that I ignore this. That's why I'm ignorant. You know, when you ignore stuff, you, you become ignorant. I, I, don't, I don't quite understand how the love of God could be so great as to fill me with the fullness of God for my daily life. I, I tend to believe I'm just a struggling pilgrim, a struggling sinner that's just saved by grace, barely getting by. But that's not what God is saying here, is it? No, listen to what God says here. He said, you're filled with the fullness of God, with the fullness of the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? All that God can put into my life and your life today, we can have. Paul says, I'm praying for it. You know why he's praying for it? Because we don't naturally naturally feel this way. We need people to pray for us, and we need to pray for this ourselves. God, fill me with the experience of your fullness today, with the totality of your blessings for my life today. How important that is, the totality of life today. More than we may ask or imagine. I want to spend a little time in this doxology, because it reminds me that when I pray, and when I pray for people, I need to have an expectation that something more and better is going to happen. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly beyond what we ask or think. How? According to the power that works within us. That's what he's been talking about. Strengthened with power on the inner man, so that we may be able to comprehend the love of God, right? And that, those kind of things. And so we can be filled with the fullness of God by God's power. He says, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Glory in the church. That's another reminder that our spiritual lives have to be included in a fellowship in a church, the church of the living Lord Jesus Christ. We're not individual Christians. We're a part of the body of Christ. Christ is not just the head of you and the head of me. He's the head of us in the church. But he's able to do exceeding abundantly beyond what we ask or think. I've got some needs in my life this day. Today, I've got some needs in my life that this verse helps me to put in proper perspective. So when I go before the Lord, I'm encouraged by these verses to say, God, now, this is how I frame what I need today. But I know you know what I need before I ask. And I know you know the answer to what I need before I ask. And I know that I ask with a trembling heart and a stammering tongue. And you will and can and want to by the power that you've given us in Christ to do exceeding abundantly beyond what we ask or think. What have you asked God for this week? Did you ask for the stuff that he was going to give you anyway? God, give me a good day. God, give me, you know, enough to eat or whatever. I don't know. That, that's the way we pray sometimes. That's living at the table of common grace. Lost people have that. 
They don't even have to pray for it. What, what did you pray for your church this week? Uh, did, did you pray that it might prosper, it might go somewhere, it might do something? Did you pray that uh, expectantly, expectantly that God would do more than you ask because he wants to do more? Did you ask to be filled with the fullness of God and the people of God to be filled with the fullness of God so your church could explode in its, in its uh, entirety? I'm not just talking about numbers. I'm talking about impact and influence. That you could raise up a group of people. That's a challenge for me today. Like a challenge. What did you pray for your family today and your children? That they would do well and go to Harvard? <laughs> Listen, how about praying that God would do something in our lives that couldn't be explained by anything else than the presence and the power of God himself? That's a good prayer for us, isn't it? Not just for protection. Not just to get by in this world but to overcome this world and ask God to fill them with the fullness. What about where you work? Or what about where you go? And what about your neighborhood? What about your neighbors and whatever else? He says we can pray and he's able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we ask or think. I like that. Going before the Lord, knowing that he's going to take our prayer and our request and do something that goes beyond. The prayer that goes beyond what we ask or think. And to him, Paul says, be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. I don't think I could make a prayer up, write one down, or even try to pray one greater than this one. Let me tell you what I'm going to pray for you this week. I'm going to pray that God will strengthen you in your inner spirit, your mind, will, your emotions, and your spirit, which belongs to Christ, by the Holy Spirit, I'm going to pray that God will strengthen you with his power. I, I'm going to ask God to give you energizing strength, amazing power to do what he wants you to do in this world. I'm going to pray that you'll understand more of the love of God with the power that God gives you to know the love of God so that you can be rooted and grounded in his love, so that you can be endowed with power, and you can practice his presence in the fellowship of your local church. And then I'm going to ask that he does something beyond what you can ask or think and fill you to all of his fullness. May God bless us and keep us in his power. Heavenly Father, we ask you to grant all of these requests and do it exceeding abundantly beyond what we can ask or think because only you are God and only you can do it. By your power and in your presence and according to Christ we pray. Amen. We'll see you next week. God bless you as you live in the pages of Scripture this week.